click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in this video we are going to start with the new chapter that is image enhancement in frequency domain. In the previous chapter we have also seen the image enhancement methods for the betterment of visual quality of image but into the spatial domain. Here we shall be utilizing the very potential tool that is image transform specifically the Fourier transform to switch from spatial domain to the frequency domain. We shall be processing there and getting the results back to the spatial domain by the use of inverse transform. So let us begin to have the understanding of Fourier transform and what actually the frequency domain is. So here we begin with the very first background that is the principal objective of enhancement we should be having in mind to begin with this particular chapter and it is to have a process and image so that the result is more suitable than the original image for a specific application. The enhancement methods now we have of two types. The first one that right now we have addressed earlier that is spatial domain where these are based on the direct manipulation of pixel values into the images and now in this chapter we have the frequency domain methods that are based on modifying the Fourier transform of the image. The viewer is actually the ultimate judge of knowing how well a particular method works. So there is no direct objective evaluation for the image enhancement methods whether they are of spatial type or that of the frequency domain type. So we have to judge them just by having a visualization. So this is with respect to the human vision perception. Now we begin with the understanding and introduction to what actually the Fourier transform at frequency domain is. In the chapter number 3 where we have the image transforms we have seen the 2D discrete Fourier transform abbreviated as 2D DFT. So that has given you how the formulation of 2D DFT is that and how the two dimensional signal can be worked on by use of that particular transform. Here the intention is to have the Fourier transform introduction and what exactly the frequency domain that represents the image sample right from a switch from spatial domain. So the Fourier transform is actually named after Jean Baptiste Joseph Fourier. He lived between 1768 to 1830. Here we can see a French mathematician Jean Baptiste Joseph Fourier. Now the Fourier has put forward idea in 1807 that the periodic functions could be represented as a weighted sum of sines and cosines. So this concept we can see with the help of a simple diagram. Here the signal what we see onto the left hand side is having very much up and downs as the amplitude we can take onto the vertical axis and here if you can take the horizontal axis to hold the parameter like the time. So we can have the representation of such a signal onto the left hand side by a combination of these many sinusoids. So by the weighted sum of sines and cosines as per the Fourier, Fourier's idea we can have the representation of this signal. So the four types of sinusoids we can see with having the variation into the amplitude levels as well as the variation into the frequency. So the variation into the frequency is very much important here so that for the Fourier transformed data either it is of one dimension or two dimensions or multi dimensions we can say that the spectral components the Fourier components represent different frequencies. The Fourier series is actually having the introduction given by any periodically repeated function can be expressed of the sum of sines or cosines of different frequencies each multiplied by a different coefficient. The second tool by the Fourier it was Fourier transform and now it is very much popular that is having the introduction that the finite curves can be expressed as the integral of sines or cosines multiplied by a weighing function widely used in signal processing field. Now for both of these tools Fourier series and transform they can have a reconstruction completely via the use of inverse process we call the direct transformation as well as the inverse transformation here it is the mention of inverse transformation. 
for the one dimensional signal we are having the representation of direct transform of discrete fourier type we are focusing on to the discreteness because our signal is actually the image and into the digital world we shall be having the discretization on the dimensions hence the fourier transformed domain representation shall be having capital f of u given by as we said it is having the weight there so it is normalized by 1 upon capital m in multiplication to the summation for x ranging from 0 to capital m minus 1 for the one dimensional signal in original spatial domain or time domain you can say that is f of x multiplied by the exponential of minus j times 2 pi u x divided by capital m for u ranging between 0 to capital m minus 1 here whereas we have the inverse discrete fourier transform formulation here f of u that we have calculated by the direct transform is the input here on to the right hand side and we are getting the recovery of f of x that was the input signal into the spatial or time domain on to this left hand side so f of x is calculated by having a summation of x ranging from 0 to m minus 1 for f of u multiplied by e to the power j times 2 pi u x divided by capital m for x ranging between 0 1 2 and so on up to capital m minus 1 the discrete fourier transform and its inverse are always existing therefore for any of the signal or any of the image especially we can say we can have the application of discrete transforms of fourier transform the domain here that is represented by the values of u over which the values of f of u range is appropriately called as the frequency domain because u determines the frequency of the components of the transform our topic is fourier transform and frequency domain so this actually defines what exactly the frequency domain is each of capital m that we have represented in earlier formulation for f of u is called as a frequency component of the transform so here we shall be having a representation of a discrete function of capital m points and its corresponding fourier spectrum so on to the left hand side we can see the spatial domain representation of f of x x being the dimension on the horizontal axis so on this axis in total we are having a representation of k points out of the total m points so amplitude level capital a is represented here so for k points here it is a and afterwards we are having it equal to zero so a discrete function we have represented for m points and the corresponding fourier spectrum if we require to have the representation can be given by having the mod of f of u on this axis and u on the horizontal axis the total span of m points as we started in the spatial domain from this particular origin we should be starting from this point to this point shall be having a symmetry on both the sides of this particular vertical axis here the central peak will be having the value a times capital k divided by m now a discrete function which plots the number of non zero points and its fourier spectrum we are going to show you as like the earlier case we here we are by increasing the number of non zero points so out of total capital m points instead of having only k here we have a span of twice k points so in earlier case the half of this was only available the corresponding fourier spectrum we have visualized here if we have twice k points of non zero type so that time we obtained the fourier spectrum like this represented by mod of f of u here u on to this horizontal axis m points ranging uh, like the same way we have seen in the previous case the central peak shall be having the amplitude twice of a times capital k divided by m here a useful analogy is to compare the fourier transform to a glass prism glass prism we know the prism is actually a physical device that separates light into the various color components each depending on its wavelength or frequency content we can say so the diagram represents here the narrow slit is allowing a incident of 
white light from the sun here so that after entering into the prism we shall be having the various components with respect to the wavelength or more especially we can refer to the frequency values here so red orange yellow green blue indigo and violet are the components out of the white color we can say this is actually the representation of deviation angle inside the prism on to the screen these have been made available so we can say this is actually the spectrum of the white light so to compare this fourier transform with the prism we can say that the fourier transform may be viewed as a mathematical prism that separates a function into various components also based on the frequency content when we consider light we talk about its spectral or frequency content hence when we talk about the fourier transform it characterizes a function by its frequency content here for the image as a signal we have the two dimensional data hence we shall be representing the direct transformation of 2d dft the two dimensional discrete fourier transform is given here by f of uv obtained by 1 upon capital m n with the summations of x ranging from 0 to m minus n m minus 1 and y also ranging from 0 to n minus 1 over the two dimensional signal f of x y in multiplication with the exponent that is e to the power minus j 2 pi in bracket here we have ux divided by m plus v y divided by n here the inverse two dimensional discrete fourier transform can be represented by the recovery of f of x y back to the spatial domain by having the operation of the summation of u ranging from 0 to m minus 1 second summation for v ranging from 0 to n minus 1 f of u v the fourier transform that we have obtained by using the direct formulation in multiplication with the exponent e to the power j times 2 pi in bracket u x divided by m plus v y divided by capital N here. Now for this two dimensional discrete Fourier transform we have represented in direct and inverse format. We can have the representation of the magnitude, the phase angle and the power spectral density by the corresponding representations as the magnitude by mod of f of uv given by the square root of the addition of the squares of r of uv and i of uv. So here r of uv and i of uv actually represents the real and imaginary part into this magnitude here. Next the phase angle is represented by phi of uv and it is given by the tan inverse of the ratio of imaginary component divided by the real component. Whereas the power spectral density or simply power spectrum if we talk about it is represented by p of uv and it is given by the square of mod of f of uv obtained as simply the addition of squares of the real part r of uv and imaginary part i of uv. The frequency domain thus is nothing more than the space defined by the values of the Fourier transform and its frequency variables u, v here. Each term of f of uv contains all the values of f of xy modified by the values of the exponential terms. Thus, with some exceptions, it is usually impossible to make the direct associations between the specific components of the image and its transforms. But some general statements can be made about the relationship between the frequency components of the Fourier transform and the spatial characteristics of the image. Since the frequency is directly related to rate of change, we may associate the frequencies in the Fourier transform with patterns of intensity variations into the image. So as we take the spectrum of the image, we can have the representation by low frequency components and high frequency components. We can say that the slowest varying frequency component that is represented by u equal to v equal to both having the value 0 that is actually correspond to the average gray level of the image and as we move away from the origin of the transform the low frequencies correspond to the slowly varying components of the image. As we again move further away from the origin 
the higher frequencies begin to correspond to faster and faster gray level changes in the image. So here we have the representation, the nomenclature we can have for this diagram. This is actually the part A representing the image of 20 by 40 white rectangle at the center on the black background having the total dimension size of 512 by 512 pixels along x and y dimension. Whereas the second image, the part B is actually a centered Fourier spectrum shown after the application of log transformation. So this was the simple introduction to what exactly recalling the Fourier transform is and the understanding of frequency domain as far as the image data is concerned. By the next lecture, we shall be discussing the next topic that is Fourier transform of sampled functions. If you like to have some more information on the topics of digital image processing, you can subscribe to EKDA channel. Thank you.